Golden Empire. I think she got a three shot onto the Disruptor. Mm -hmm. The Dazzle is even weaker than the Disruptor is. He does have a Solar Crest, but it, I don't really think that matters when you only have 948 HP to back yourself up. And Poor Roshan, dear god. He dies so quickly. Holy cow. Imagine that's the Disruptor now. <laughs> Aegis for Hal, uh, Cheese for Super, who's about to finish up a Butterfly as well. That is an insane amount of farm right now. They don't have an MKB. They're nowhere near it. Your Ember Spirit is just so far behind, and this might have been one of the games where I've seen Silent pressured the most. Like I'm typically, I'm used to seeing him go 10-0, and 0, have a ridiculous amount of farm, but Vici Gaming have just done such a good job of shutting down the cores of Empire this entire game. And now... Even more armor aura with the Vlads coming in on the Courier. Vici Gaming well set up to win this last team fight to end all team fights, conceivably. Very few comebacks when two racks are down, but Empire, they're trying to even things out. They're already trying to push up that top lane. Tier 3 tower, though, being threatened by how between the Blood Rage and the Assault Curass. His right clicks are something fearsome. There's that butterfly. As well as the Vlans, Vici Gaming now ready to commit to the push uphill. And you can't really sacrifice two racks if you're here as Empire because you'll just lose too much map control and they'll go for the smoke. So I really feel like this is this has to work for them right now because there's not a whole lot of farm progression that's coming in. Oh, Stormshare jumping in on the back. BKB already activated. He really needs to get FY, but there goes the Glimmer Cape Resolution. Still sees a little bit of him. He's going to be able to knock him back with Yoki, and they will almost take him out. No, he gets a call the brace. Now a great Sonic Wave from, from the uh, Queen of Pain. They will be able to finish off FY in the end, but oh, the heroes are going to get cleaned up on the side of Empire in exchange for that one support. Now, as they jump forward, always one fly is going to be the next target. Shalgrave and TP out Resolution. His second life, he comes back, goes straight for Super, but has to jump himself away as he drops too low. And Vici Gaming have enough sustain to now be able to focus on that melee rack. Silent Orchid it up, needs some help. That comes from Resolution, finishes off the Queen of Pain's Aegis. Super, though, will get that range racks. How? Backs himself up with the blink, and Team Empire. Second lane of racks down, Team Empire going to be struggling heavily. It's 43 minutes in, a 15,000 gold lead for Vici Gaming. They wanted to just make this a clean 1-1 against VG Gaming, probably one of the tougher uh, teams in their group. But as time goes on, that doesn't seem to be possible. It's just insane how long it takes for them to even get the Winter Wyvern down. They had to fully commit three heroes in that pursuit, a full BKB timer, the Ember Spirit's life, and they still barely killed FY. His positioning this game has been so good. He's just waiting by his teammates, willing to back people up, He's not even really relying on the Winter's Curse anymore. Like, just him being alive scares Resolution so much. <laughs> I mean, they, the first thing that FY did was a quick blink backwards that actually stalled up Resolution's damage so heavily and played a very key part in the Winter Wyvern surviving as long as he did. Now, how? He's going to be forced into a BKB here. Yoki still has his ultimate. If they get enough bashes, maybe they can kill Hal, but never mind. Yoki just gets cleaned up nice and fast. Swap out, plus the cold embrace is there. Hal double saved by his allies, and Team Empire drop another two cores. Aloha Dance trying to get himself out, but he's going to be run down pretty quickly. Pops the smoke, but FY's there with the blink, and that'll be a third death for Team Empire. Yeah, Aloha Dance is making a valiant effort to try to get out of here, but every single hero on Empire right or uh, on Vici Gaming right now is in hot pursuit, trying to keep get himself away? away. Oh my God! <laughs> oh, he got crit. He's that like, <laughs> was close. So Vici Gaming, I mean, that's actually really good for them, right? They managed to stall up the Disruptor's death so long that by the time they get through this tier two and tier three tower, Disruptor's still not going to be up. Yeah, he doesn't even have buyback for this fight. He tried to go all in to try to get the Aghanim Scepter. And maybe that item actually would have changed their fortunes. Like, if he could have gotten it off before Hao was able to get his BKB, before FY gets his Glimmer Cape off, then maybe you would have seen some form of a comeback. But as it stands, Vici Gaming, their farm lead is just too much. Like, Ember Spirit is a core that is meant to be behind early, but not by this amount. Mm -hmm. So, Mega Creeps, it seems like Team Empire going to be losing this game to with a whimper and not a bang. Empires, I guess, are just going to try and battle it out against Mega Creeps. I mean, it's TI after all. There's, if there's no even the slimmest to. chance of being able to come back. They'll go for it. They've got an Ember Spirit after all, but he still needs a ton more farm to be able to deal with Megas. 
Today has been the, the uh, I don't want to say throws. I think that's a bad term. It's been the day of comebacks. Yep. Day of crazy comebacks, to be sure. Silent almost gets caught out. Oh, <laughs> that is the combination right there. Rupture into a swap. That was like the, the 950 range swap that practically kills the Dazzle straight up. And now Vici Gaming, I uh, love this facing from them. They are not taking any chances when it comes to ending this game. They put Howe in the front lines and leave the rest of the team sitting farther back, well-spaced to make sure that Empire don't get some sort of opportunity to initiate. He got Houdini'd. I saw him and then I didn't. And Resolution's nope, going to be the target now. Yeah, he gets blown up by the Sonic Wave now. A Winter's Curse placed on Aloha Dance. And finally, there it is. Empire will call it game number two. Goes to Vici Gaming. Yeah, I really felt like Empire could have done this, but there were so many errors in that bottom lane, especially where they just couldn't really contest anything. And even with the overall decent mid game that they had with the timings, it just all fell apart so quickly. So we see some of the essentials there for Team Empire to challenge some of the stronger teams here at TI, but they got to get their act together. Right? They really they just, do. They just dropped you know, too many mistakes here in both game one and game number two to compete with the best. So this is their first series of TI. I'm sure they'll be looking better as the group stages uh, go on. In fact, we have another series. It's going to be Team Empire versus Ehome coming up next. But first, we toss the analyst desk to talk about this game. All right. The score, what, what was the score, Sindarin? <laughs> oh, right. 2-0. 2-0 <laughs> in the last match. Vici, Vici taking the game. I do, I do have some actual legitimate questions for you, though, in a second. <laughs> okay, let's see uh, if I'll answer them. We'll, we'll find out. <laughs> all right. So Vici Gaming taking that win. Uh, now, I mean, Cap was mentioning that a little bit, too, at the end there. Empire, I mean, a lot of people have hopes for reason at, for Empire at TI5, but it looks like they were drawing too many mistakes. They do have another match today to prove that they can get back into it. I mean, where do you think these flaws are coming out from for Empire? Uh, it's like, you know, it's, is it unforced errors? Is it forced errors in this game? Mm -hmm. I think a couple of them were just flat-out overextensions, but I think Vici made just as many of those mistakes. Okay. And then when it, when it came to, like, the, the actual team fights that were fairly even, I think Vici came just, like, one step ahead in the execution. Um, to me, Vici Gaming looked more impressive in Game 1 than in, in this game. Yeah, that's very uh, true. A little uncharacteristic uh, overextensions, but... On all, when it really mattered, they kept their cool. After giving Empire pretty much a full-on comeback, they still... And they just shifted gears and yeah. took it home. I mean, Winter, game two, it definitely could have gone either way, right? In the middle, we were like, oh, shoot, is Empire actually going to win? We were having a little bit of a debate back and forth. Uh, but Vici Gaming now, I think Syndrome put it nicely. Game one definitely looked a little bit more convincing. But do you think, you know, it looks like overall their attitude from what we can gather on day one as a whole... Do they look like they're ready to play at TI5? They're going to show up to try to go for as high as they can in the standings. I believe there was a lot of room that they improved on compared to last month. And I think the biggest thing i seen in these two games was the drafting was much more Vici-like, I mm -hmm. want to say. <laughs> yeah, you can see a lot of their old, old plans and old gameplays uh, in the last two games. They were much more seen as a team in general. And... You know, Isis was on one of his fit, most disruptive off-laning heroes, like Undying, and they punished Silent under Carry Amber severely in the laning phase. Like, personally, I feel like Vici Gaming have they could have played better this game, but I, all in all, I think they'll be really happy with what they did today. All right. Well, we have a highlight of that moment that you were mentioning earlier that you know Empire almost came back and actually took the game by storm. storm. So we're going to take a the look storm at that here. Superior, uh, yeah, this is uh, actually this turns out way better than than right, you would expect. It looks like the spirit breaker is just flat out going to die here, but gets the BKB off. He's actually going to charge here and almost get killed by rupture, but he stays alive so long. This is even without shallow grave being in range. I believe that wasn't even used there. And I think they end up turning this into a 4-for-1, only Queen of Pain escapes. Mm -hmm. This is one of the strengths of, of Spirit Breaker at this point in time, is that he is an innately tanky hero. He gets the BKB. He's not the target you want to expend your uh, your Winter's Curse on. I think they just got caught by surprise uh -huh. by how close Empire actually were to the Breaker at that point. Right. Like, uh, had they known the position they were in, they would not have expended a curse on that, because that, okay. they needed they needed for a more valuable target. And Fair point. Now... Ben, let's talk about Ember a little bit because we've been talking about how he's showing up a lot more often than we expected. But at the same time, if I'm not mistaken, especially during yesterday's games, his win rate has not been, his successes have not been that common, although he's been showing up in more games than we expected. Do you think that 
it's still worth it for a lot of these teams to focus on Ember as a hero at TI5 right now? Or It depends on what kind of team. I think if you're trying to draw out until late game and you're very sure that you can make it to late game with the farmed Ember, then I think it's okay because he's really good mm -hmm. uh, with five or six slots. As of hero like Dazzle, but from the games that we've seen, he's just been dominated in lane, wherever he's been. Uh, Queen of Pain in mid when maybe played him, uh, safe lane in this game when he is matched up versus the Undying, and he just is so vulnerable, and he's not that great of a farmer. He, I mean, I think he's a good hero in the sense that he can uh, get out of control when they get a lot of kills, but Empire actually played, I think, very atypically of their typical style. They mm. didn't group up, whereas Vici, I think they clumped up as five very early. They took over the opponent's jungle, dropped a ward there, used their tombstone, took down the tower, and then got map control from there, whereas Empire, they're, they look like they're trying to farm towards a goal that isn't actually a key to victory. Like, if Lincoln's comes out on... Uh, on Storm as well as a BKB to counter to Winner's Curse, then you just get right click by the co-op. Like, there's always right. going to be more items on Vici, and it's similar to game number one. It's like, okay, well, Tiny can be big, but he's still going to die to an over-farm Vici. So I did really like their game plan, uh, and yeah, maybe a little bit of a draft, but overall, I think they just have to go back to their teamwork and chemistry. Okay. Uh, we do have another highlight, of course, uh, as we continue to wrap up this game uh, between Empire and Vici. Now, with Vici kind of showing, I guess, what we've been talking about, Vici definitely showing up a little bit more to play here, taking down Empire in, in the last couple moments uh, of the game and then securing that victory for themselves. So while we take a look at that game, we'll wrap up our game here. Of course, another series coming up, so don't get too relaxed back at home. Uh, but we will see Vici going in for another push. And we feel like Resolution played a little bit too aggressive when they just had a slight advantage. Mm. If they were, like, super far ahead, then I think that he could have played like this, but a lot of times he put his team in very compromising situations in this particular fight as well as the fight when they pushed a T3 on top lane, and of course Bloodseeker being super fast just chases down the Ember Spirit, and Ember Spirit very low armor, and you know their support duo just kind of fell apart. I think in addition to that, his, his aim with Ball Lightning was just uncharacteristically poor in this game. A lot of the times he actually spends half his mana pool on jumping in, so he uses it only for positioning, but a big part of ball lightning when you jump big distance is that you're like, you half kill the support before you even start hitting them. Right. But I think I saw two or three team fights in a row. He's trying to jump for, I think, at least the Wyvern once or twice, and he actually misses, even though Wyvern does not blink or anything. He's just, he just mistargets yeah. it or mis, uh, misunderstands the movement pattern or whatever. And a little uncharacteristic from Resolution this game. I, I hope he's going to come back a bit stronger. Yeah. He is, he's an incredible player, but you can just. You, you know, kind of expect more from him because he was the. Guy that has the best start, if you compare all the lanes. Yeah, know, they had trouble in the other lanes, but mid lane he was like I think at 1.8k net worth, and he was the highest in the whole game. So we kind of expected more from a storm spirit that had a really smooth early game. Yeah, I mean overall it sounds like a lot of the mistakes that Empire did make weren't because oh it looks like they're not on par with the other teams. It's just like something was off with them that game. And generally, if you, and again, it was their first game, right? Both teams, sure. But at the same time, uh, if you're looking, if you had came in with hopes for Empire, you're looking at it and saying, all right, well, maybe they've now they now know where to kind of iron out all their crinkles, and they'll be able to get into their second match, which will be the last match coming up, of course, uh, against Ehome, and they'll be able to kind of show us, all right, this is why we came to TI, right? This is why people are talking about Empire, because that's what I'm hearing from you guys overall. Yeah, I mean, their draft, you guys didn't have problems with their drafts. Uh, their gameplay ideas. Generally, I mean, Ben, you have a couple issues with maybe how their game plan overall was set for the course of the game, but uh, nothing too shocking or in terms of like, whoa, Empire, that's not the team we expect to see. It's more just small mistakes adding up over the course of the game. So coming up, of course, next, we do have a couple more matches. Uh, our other, The last matches on other streams have uh, gone on, 